Hello and welcome to another episode of Fourier Transform. In this video, we will learn about the continuous Fourier Transform. And stay tuned, because in later videos, we will learn about things like the FFT, the DFT, and the Fourier Transform's various applications throughout physics. Without any further ado, let's get into it. So before we begin, you may notice that I'll be trying dark mode for this video. Please let me know in the comments whether you like dark mode or the previous light mode more. So in the last video, I mentioned the important distinction between the Fourier series and the Fourier transform. And in the last video, we saw how the Fourier series is a sum of sines and cosines, expressing our f of t function as a sum of sines and cosines. But a transform, the Fourier transform, the Laplace transform, any transform in general, has a very important characteristic. It transforms a function with one domain, in this case our f of t time domain function, into a function with another domain, in this case a g of omega frequency domain function. So what is the formula and why is this useful? Well, the formula is g of omega equals integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of t times e to the negative i omega t dt. The key here is that since t is the integration variable, and since this is a definite integral, though with infinite bounds, we will be able to turn the t into a constant. And then we will be left with a function of omega. So why is this useful? Well, the Fourier transform of a function looks something like this. And this spike here shows us one of the frequencies that comprises our f of t function, our original function. And there might be several spikes if the function is comprised of several frequencies. So it's kind of telling us the frequencies that are important to us. And there's one final important distinction to make here. This is the graph of the Fourier transform of an aperiodic function. But this is the graph of the Fourier transform of a periodic function. And the reason for this is that we're integrating from negative infinity to infinity. So in the case of a periodic function that goes on forever and ever and ever, the integral will either be zero or infinity. And these infinite spikes will be the frequencies that we care about. But if the function is aperiodic, then the integral can be finite. So now let's do an example. A very common function to use for an example is this sort of square in the middle signal because it is aperiodic. However, for the purposes of offering a more unique insight in this video, I decided to make another slightly different aperiodic function. So imagine we have a cosine wave, which obviously is periodic. The way to make it aperiodic is to chop it. For example, at negative 2 pi and 2 pi. So how would we do this? Well, instead of integrating from negative infinity to infinity, we would just integrate from negative 2 pi to 2 pi of cosine of t times e to the negative i omega t dt. So how will we approach this integral? We can see that two functions are being multiplied together, but there's a much more elegant way to do this as opposed to integration by parts and all that messiness. And the key is to use Euler's formula. If you already understand Euler's formula and the intuitions behind it, you can skip this part. However, if you don't, I highly recommend this because I think it's enlightening and very important. So if you have the complex plane with real and imaginary, and we have a unit circle on the complex plane, then the function e to the ix corresponds to rotating 
around this unit circle. So if we were to also draw out the x-axis here, then this would look like a sort of spiral. And this is where the most interesting part comes up. Because if we were to flatten this down on the real part, then it would look like a cosine wave. And if we were to flatten this down on the imaginary part, it would be a sine wave. So we can apply this to our integral. So we can say that this equals to integral from negative 2 pi to 2 pi of cosine of t times cosine of negative omega t, because that's our x in this case, that's being multiplied by i, plus i times sine of negative omega t dt. So we can simplify this further by distributing the cosine of t. And the next step to figure out this integral would be to use a couple of trig formulas. So first of all, if we have cosine of A times cosine of B, this equals to cosine of A plus B plus cosine of A minus B over two. And then if we have sine of A times cosine of B, this will equal to sine of A plus B plus sine of a minus b over 2. So again, we can use this in our integral. So now our integral can be written as integral from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, and we can bring out the 1 half of cosine of negative omega t plus t plus cosine of negative omega t minus t dt and you may notice that this integral can be split up again into two integrals and then we can perform a similar process on the other part of the integral And now, the final step before we actually open this up is to just factor this little binomial here. So, the way we do that is we say t, we factor out the t times negative omega plus 1. And we do the same thing for all the other integrals. And then this is a really simple integral. For example, for the first term, we'll have 1 half times sine of t times negative omega plus 1. And since we treat negative omega plus 1 as a constant, we'll have to divide this by negative omega plus 1. And then this will be, of course, from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. And then we can do the same for the other three. And of course, we add 4c to this, but that's not really relevant in real world applications. So then we can open all of this up using the fundamental theorem of calculus.
f of x shown in red is the real part and g of x shown in green is the imaginary part and you can see that g of x equals to zero because if you think about it since cosine is a symmetric function this will equal to this because uh, it's the same thing but just with negative 2 pi and then there's a minus sign here so they cancel out and the same thing will be true for the other two terms so thus we have figured out the Fourier transform of our aperiodic version of a cosine wave what we learned today is the continuous Fourier transform there exists various other types of Fourier transforms like the discrete Fourier transform or the fast Fourier transform and also things like the Laplace transform. And we will learn about these in later videos, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Please apply a force vector to the like and subscribe buttons, and see you next time.